heading into the Shell Show. We have so many fun vendors here. Um, they have shells for sale that are super, super fun. And they have swag for sale and all kinds of fun things. And then over here, we have the amazing Amanda Colette right here. She has a new book out called My Way of Shelling. And her book is available here. And we're going to do a quick little segment with her so she can tell you a little bit about her book. <laughs> and yeah. where oh, yeah. you right. can purchase yeah, it. So this is super yeah. exciting. I'm very proud of her. She, um, I'll show you guys really quick. Kind of a little sneak peek of her book. So try this one-handed here. So you can see inside there's like awesome color photos. This is also a really awesome book for shell identification. For, for those of you who find a shell um, on Sanibel or on the beach and you don't know um, what it is, you can use this book as kind of an ID guide, which is like super, super cool. Okay, hey Amanda! Congratulations! Oh my god, I'm so excited for you. Okay, tell us a little bit about your book. Okay, this is called My Way of Shelling, and I'm from Kentucky, most of you guys know that, but I've been shelling for six years. And of course, I had to fly down here because I'm like 14, 15 hours away. So within my six years of shelling, I self-taught myself. So I have found many, much easier ways to do it. So I thought I would write about it and share it with everyone to make your life much easier. So I shared with you how to clean them, how to get the home, what you need in your room, at the condos or hotels or whatever. So it's just going to make your life much easier. And how much is your book? My book is $25. $25. And where can people buy it if they're not here at the Shell Show? Okay, if you're not at the Shell Show, you can get it off my Facebook, which is under my name, Amanda Collin. You can get it off my Instagram page, Amanda's underscore Ocean Treasure, or you can get it from my email. Perfect. Well, yes. fantastic. Thank you so much. Congratulations. And I can't wait to see your beautiful artwork yes. in the show. Yes, I have two Valentines and a portrait. Cool. Well, we will definitely take a look at that. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. All right, we are entering the show. This is Saturday morning and it's right around 9, so it just opened. Um, if you guys are interested in information about coming to the Shell Show, um, membership for the Sandcap Shell Club, um, this is a nice little board um, showing just kind of, you know, Shell Show history and membership. I'm going to just screen this real quick. You guys can pause the video if you want to see um, information on membership. Um, I will also say that the Marco Island Shell Show is also coming up on March 19th, 20th, and 21st. And I'm just going to put this here, right here, so you guys can also um, see that if you missed the Shell Show this weekend here, you can still catch it if you're in town um, on Marco, which is also just an equally as fabulous show. So I'm going to try to start in the artistic division, and I'm going to be kind of quick. So if you guys want to see something more, just screenshot um, or pause the video rather, and you guys can kind of check out detail more. Let me see. This drawing is a scratch board. Oh, that's so cool. Um, so if you guys don't know what a scratch board is, it's a black. So the black is how it comes. It comes completely black. And then you use a little like razor to scratch in and instead of a white piece of paper and you're drawing with black ink, you have a black piece of paper and as you scratch it, it scratches off, I think it's carbon or something, but this is all just done with little scratches. So that is pretty awesome. We used to play with um, scratch boards when I was younger. And this is the photography and art. Here. Ooh, look at this. This is the mermaid crown. And again, I'm going to kind of just go here so you guys can pause the video if you want to read. I'm just trying to make it quick because I know that a lot of you don't have hours to, <clears throat> to watch this. Although I know some of you wouldn't mind. But this is made with wire. So this is the same type of wire that we use to wrap sea glass, wrap seashells. And this is a crown. It is absolutely beautiful. Wait till you guys see it when it comes around. Look at the detail. 
hopefully you guys will see the details. So some of you um, are gonna ask me why I'm not live. And my service in this building, I don't know if it's because of the roof or they don't have Wi-Fi here. So my service is just not great. Look how pretty. Wow. You guys can see like the little coral pieces too. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, so this is just easier to be able to have you guys see detail so it's not blurry. Okay, so here's an award for the best miscellaneous exhibit. And you can see her little headpiece is all little teeny tiny shells. So this way I can post this video in high def and you guys will be able to see all the little details instead of being blurry. So hopefully that'll help. Look at the little mushrooms with limpet shells. Can you guys see the little mushrooms? That is adorable. And I'm going to give you guys a screenshot of this starfish too because it is pretty interesting. Necklace. And I do do my best to show you guys everything but if I miss something I'm sorry. If I miss somebody's name tag I'm trying to hit everybody's um, little name tags so you guys know who did it. But if I miss it, oh, this is a cute little kind of kind of Florida Gator <laughs> little outfit there. I kind of like that. Show you up close with the little the little tiny. Hold on, I gotta find my hand. The little tiny whelks here. Can you guys see those? Super cute. And this is like, oh my gosh, look at this little tiny, tiny, like tiny isn't even the word. Teeny, tiny, I'm trying to focus. Look how tiny that is. So that's the back of her head. And then you'll see her face in a minute. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's so small. Look how pretty. Those little pieces of coral at the top. That is awesome. That is very cool. And here's an ostrich egg. I always love the ostrich eggs. I feel like they're kind of like Sailor's Valentine's, only like more 3D. And those look like little operculums that make the hummingbird. That's really cool, that are dyed or painted. So cool, look at all those intricate designs. Look at the little flower right here, made out of wendel traps. For all of you wendel trap lovers and you don't know what to do with them, make little flowers. Here's a jewelry box, beautiful. Oh, look at the fun picnic basket. That is so cool. Oh my gosh, okay, so here, outlining right here you guys those are little tiny baby little hatchling whelks isn't that so cute that are painted silver i think one of the things that that i admire the most about a lot of these crafts and artwork ah, look at the skeleton a shell coffin how many of you want to be buried in a shell coffin that is pretty cool <clears throat> is um, the thing that, that I really admire is the time that it takes to create all of these and, and honestly too the creativity I mean you have to be pretty creative to come up with look at this elephant you guys all of these beautiful ideas and then actually take the time I mean I don't know about you guys but I've made shell flowers before and it takes a really long time it takes even longer to make trying to focus on these tiny little shells. It takes even longer if they're teeny tiny, but look how intricate and perfect those shells are. That is very cool. Oh my god. And this is the same. So these are all teeny tiny little hatchling baby shells and teeny little sand dollars. You guys look at the sand dollars like they're tiny, absolutely 
teeny tiny, just to give you guys an idea. I'm gonna put my finger right here so you guys can see how tiny those are. And then it comes with like a little matching dress. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna backtrack really quick <clears throat> over here so you guys can see. So this is a bunch of shark eyes and this is the best picture or mosaic award. All of the shark eyes. Very cool. And here is Van Gogh Cafe Terrace at night. That is amazing. That is so crazy. So all of these little tiny shells that have been painted. I mean, t you guys, like, tiny. Look at that. Like, they're so small. And it's all the little shells. Wow. That is remarkable. Look up here. All the little rice olives that are painted that were each set on individually. And then if you back up, back into anybody, you guys can see the whole thing. That's really cool. And then here's the original. So you guys can see what it looks like when Van Gogh did it. So pretty. Susan Lloyd, I've seen your name a few times. Your work is absolutely beautiful. Just gorgeous. So hopefully this is some inspiration for you all. Brenda Rice, look how pretty. So a lot of you are gonna ask what the flowers are made of. They're dyed gar scales um, right here in the middle in these flowers. And then this looks like um, they're scallops that were cut. Um, maybe lion's paws, I'm not really sure. If Brenda's watching, maybe she'll comment, but those are kind of cut shells, and they're awesome. I mean, I've never seen that before. That is so pretty. Good job, Brenda, congratulations. And here's Cheryl Whitten, wow. Look at the detail. So awesome, and then, this is so fun. It is an American flag made of shells. Very cool. There's just so much to see, you guys. Just that, all we did was those those two sides. And there's so much to see here. All right, so let's come over here. We're gonna start looking at some of the Sailor's Valentine. Super fun. Wow, that takes creativity. And this is the best double Sailor's Valentine. So the categories for Valentine's, there are so many. There's like medium, large, small, tiny, and then there's double. So this is a double, which means it has two sides here and it's hinged together in the middle. Gorgeous. Look at this one. And again, all of the details on this, um, on the Valentine's, they they have, you can buy this Valentine box and then there's glass on the front and then they do a design inside. Look at the little peas and pea pods. Those are cute, they look like pea pods. Love that. And this is beautiful, look at this compass. Oh, even the embroidery in the middle was done by the artist. Look how cool. Well, this one is the best medium Sailor's Valentine. And it says um, Baltimore Oriole made with shells. So you guys know that we just moved from Maryland. So we are actually going to an Orioles game this month, but look how, look how cool, that is beautiful, just love them, I, I don't think I would have the patience to do a sailor song, I love to craft the shells, but the amount of time and patience it takes to do these is crazy, 
And like I said, you guys are able to just pause the video if you want to take a closer look at any of these. Beautiful creations. So this is the hobbyist class, student grades K through six. So if you have um, a child, they can also enter into the shell show too. There's a separate category just for them, which is super fun. All of these are made with shells. Oh, look at the anaconda. <laughs> that is so cute. Here's an armadillo. This is so creative. Look at the pigs. Look at the pigs. And here's a nesting duck. A possum. Can you guys see the eyes of the possum here? That is so cute. I love this. And they're all in their little habitat. Look at the platypus in its little habitat. How creative is that? Well done. Well done. Used an underwater camera to take a picture of the starfish. That's very cool. That's a great picture. Here's a beautiful mermaid with a mermaid purse. So we call these um, mermaid purses, but they're actually um, stingray skate egg sacs, which is pretty cool. So a little baby skate will, or shark. Sometimes sharks do, but usually I'm um, on this coast, they're usually skate egg sacks. This is so cute. Can you guys see this? This is today's weather for Sanibel Island. And then each one is a different shell. So this is rain, tornado, that's funny. Tidal wave, lightning, and a hurricane. That is extremely cool. And it's on a little, um, set with a remote, so it's like a TV screen or a computer screen. How cute is that? That's really creative. Oh, that's pretty. So many awesome ideas. I hope a lot of you get some inspiration from some of these. If, you're, if you've got shells and you don't know what to do with them, you can always take them all and create the state of Florida. Look at that, or whatever state you live in. It's very cool. Look at all the shells that create the state of Florida. There's a little baby Genonia right there. How cute is that? A little tiny one, too. I'm going to put my finger there so you guys can see how small. That is very cool. All the way down to the keys. Wow. So one of the things I love about scallops is that you can see their eyes and this picture is pretty amazing because you can see the eyeballs of the scallop. You guys have seen them in some of my videos but you can actually see their eyes really well in that photo. There's some shark eyes. And this is cool. So you can repurpose old furniture or I guess this was some type of table and covered in shelves. Look at this. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. A lot of these shelves are not from our area, but the Pacific. Absolutely gorgeous. Very cool. And here are the teeny tiny miniature Sailor's Valentines. So here is the first place. I mean, the, the little tiny details. Oh, look at the ballerina. I love that one. The detail is incredible. So if you come to the Shell Show, I will tell you to plan some time. This one won two awards. This was Best in Show, Professional, 
and also the best single sailor's valentine. So this one won a lot of awards. You guys ready? I was gonna say, make sure you take some time. Plan, plan to be here a while because, I mean, you can just spend 10 minutes easy just looking at just one of these creations. So I'm gonna try to zoom in so you guys can see the detail. And what's cool about some of these is they're very, very 3D. So if you can see the bird, I know there's a glare. I'm trying to get the glare on for you guys. It's just so amazing. That is pretty cool, guys. Congratulations, David. Very cool. Look at this one. And it is huge. So pretty. And there's some pretty flowers made by shells. So these shells are sliced long ways. And they make pretty fun flowers and you can make Christmas ornaments too that are really pretty. And there's a little Christmas tree. How many of you have beachy shell trees? Here is a shell encrusted goose egg. Well, the little bird. Oh, come on, let me focus. There we go. Adorable. And this is really cool. Pirates come home for Christmas. So it's all festive. Little candles in the little Indian boats. So, okay, so a lot of people call these slipper shells, but I've always called them Indian boats. And that's why. To me, they don't look like slippers. They look like little canoes. <laughs> and here's a pretty little Christmas tree made out of those bar scales. Another green one here. Super cool. And here is a, looks like a needle point or a cross stitch. Yes, cross stitch. Try to focus. Absolutely beautiful. And this is a very pretty piece of clothing with shells all over it. Look how fun. And I always am hoping Peter has a jacket. And this is probably going to be Julie's favorite jacket because Julie loves sharks. She loves, loves, loves sharks. And yes, Julie, I'm filming with my, I'm filming with my, um, my right hand but I do have my beautiful orange scallop and silver charms and bracelet on today so I hope to see Julie tomorrow if you guys haven't checked out Julie's Julie's jewelry that's a tongue twister right there Julie's jewelry um, you can check her out on Facebook at Ocean Soul oh my gosh those are tiny those little pendants and here's some wire wrapped scallop jewelry How many of you are seashell jewelry lovers? If you are, then this is the, a good little section for you guys to be able to see these fun beachy bracelets. And here's a beautiful necklace. You know, it's glary. Very, very glary. And this one, I'm going to try to zoom in here too so you guys can see the detail of the wire wrapping. That is fabulous wire wrapping. Absolutely fabulous. Scallop came from Blind Pass here on Sanibel. Little pocket watch. That's a great way to repurchase an antique pocket watch. Weeping Welk Tree, kind of like a weeping willow crossed with a 
cherry blossom. Very cool. Look at all the teeny tiny little whelks, baby whelks. And here's a beautiful lamb. Another creation of Susan Lloyd. Second place. And this lamp is beautiful too. Look at this one. I'm trying to try to change my. So you guys can see what it looks like in different lighting. Very cool. Those tiny little pieces of coral. So when we lived in Maryland, we had this pond and around the pond in the spring, we had bleeding hearts and they're so cool. If you've ever seen one in person, they're such a pretty flower and this is such a beautiful display of what they look like if they were shops. <laughs> I love this. I love that so much. That is absolutely beautiful. Get a good, good view of it. And this one's so pretty. I don't know what kind of shells those are. They might be fish scales of some sort. But this is just such a beautiful arrangement in a sea urchin. I love this. And this is a white corn flower. She did a fabulous job recreating this flower. So that's another fun thing too, is take your favorite flower and then figure out how to create it using shells. Try to focus in so you guys can see both of them. So cool. I'm just so in awe of all of the awesome artwork. And this is really cool. The Venus fly traps made out of rose petal talons. And then can you guys see the little the little fly inside of the fly trap and then sea urchin spines. Try to zoom in for you guys so you guys can see. That is very cool. I love that. Keep fingers away from plants. And this one got the judges special award. That is very creative. Big pirate ship. Wow. Got all the operculums, which is the trap door for whelks and conks to make the hull of the ship. That's pretty fun. That's beautiful. Look at that. Look at this giant like, trap right here, you guys. Absolutely Beach bungalow. Oh no, you can go ahead.
I don't know, there's something about orange scallops, you guys. My, my favorite little orange scallop, there's something about it that I just love orange scallops. the little snail, those little eyes and his little antenna. And then here's a pineapple. I love the pineapple. That is so cute. That was creative. I love that. Gosh, you guys, this is a tribute to Dink Darling by Linda Dorn. I love this. Look at the flamingos, you guys. And you guys know I am like obsessed with flamingos, like obsessed. And these are like the cutest flamingos I have like ever seen. All right. Jessica Sinclair, I'm gonna tag you, and you have to watch this because this is like the cutest little thing ever. Look at the little necklace. Oh my, oh my god. Somebody like still frame that for me. Look how cute the flamingos are. And look at this one. Look at this little sassy one right here. With the feathers. And the, the rosette, what are they called? The rosette spoonbills. Rose spoonbills. I'm not a bird person. I'm a shell person. I'm a horse person. I'm a dog person. Definitely not a bird person. I think they're called rosette spoonbills, are they not? Anyway, somebody will know. And the storks, the wood storks. Look at this little guy looking at his face. This is so cool. I could, I could look at this all day. A little turtle down here. And the little skimmers. Cute. They got like every bird species. The heron back there. And the egret. That egret's like awesome. And then up here, have a bald eagle. Hold on, I'm trying to. It's on a black background. And then look at the little eagles, you guys. The little baby eagles. They went out in the water and rocks. Sorry, I love this. This is probably like. This is definitely one of my favorite displays. I love this so much. Love it. Let these other pretty ladies take a look at that amazingness over there. So cool. So I am not. Don't ever really quote me on anything I say, you guys, because I'm not, you know, I don't always know what I'm talking about. But I'm pretty sure, and some of you do Sailor's Valentine's, so you'll be able to correct me if I am wrong. But the history of Sailor's Valentine's is kind of cool because back in the day, you know, we didn't have internet, the, the ladies didn't have internet and Amazon and TV and computers and phones and um, some, some of them didn't even have cars. So back in the day when the husbands, look at the little turtle, how cute is the little turtle, I love this, little, um, little box turtle, the women would be waiting for their husbands to come back from overseas and the wars, so they would make them sailors valentines. So all of the sailors that were gone when their wives, you know, were just sitting at home waiting, they would they would take their time and create these valentines, which is why sometimes they'll have like love messages or I miss you or things like that. So that is kind of the history of why sailors' valentines are like a thing. Look how beautiful this one is. Love that one. Look at the detail, you guys. Wow. Oh my gosh, I'm literally looking around. No joke. I'm like looking around right now because I'm like, did I already pass Amanda's Sailor's Valentine in the type here? So you guys met Amanda earlier. She has the book My Way of Shelling. She calls this one Sunset Dreams. I know that um, I, I was surprised that she didn't place, but guys, like, 
I, I mean, all of these are so incredible, right? But Amanda has this eye for detail that I can't even express to you guys. Like, Amanda, if you're watching, please tell us how long it took you to make this, like when you started creating this, because I'm interested to know if you completed this within you know, months or, or years. Like when you started this one, because this is just, I love the orange scallops. Again, I'm an orange scallop fan, so. And it is just gorgeous. Amanda, well done. These little flowers down here, oh, I'm trying to zoom, there we go, are just so incredible. Amanda, I'm proud of you. This is absolutely stunning. Love it, love it, love it. So, so envious of people that can have this this kind of patience <laughs> I don't have patience not like this best in show hobbyist and then the best single sailors Valentine so two awards plus a blue ribbon for this one guys some of the detail again I know I'm going quickly but you guys can pause the video and then you can check out some of the the details of this work because it is just and, the, and, and honestly, the more that you look at these, the more you see. You know, you kind of look at this and then all of a sudden your, your eye might go to the middle or whatnot and then you start looking around and you start seeing the sea urchin spines and all of the little shells and the sand dollars. You might have not even noticed all the sand dollars right at, at first. So cool. Let me get up here so you guys can see. another piece of furniture that has been covered in shelves. And these all look like they are locally collected. So here we go. Reduce, reuse, and remember. So this is a table from the recycling area. Um, and then shells collected from Captiva Sandville and Bonita Beach. And they are from up in Canada. So Take it home and remember, remember your shells. This is a beautiful, beautiful picture. Fabulous photograph. All the shells. Oh, Amanda, I didn't know you entered this. This is fabulous. So here is the cookbook. And look how pretty this photograph is. Gorgeous Junonia. And then this is probably one of the coolest pictures I've ever seen. So this is a lightning well that is in the process of laying eggs. So you guys have seen before um, the, the egg casings on the beach, there are spirally egg casings. And then in each little pouch, is gonna be the little baby whelks, which you have seen a ton of in the Sailor's Valentines and the other artwork. And this is actually showing the whelk laying the eggs. And those aren't even really like developed shells yet. They're just kind of circles. That is, that's probably the coolest picture ever. Well done. Brian Holloway, Captain Brian, if you guys want a good shell tour, contact Captain Brian and he will get you out. Alright, and we are into the holiday displays. This is a big, big pumpkin. It's so fun. And then we have some actual Valentines, not just Sailor's Valentines, but actual Valentine's. This one's really cool. It looks like that might be in resin. Set in resin, which is really fun. And then we have some Christmas. So the holiday is a category. So this is any holiday you want. And here's a little nutcracker. 
and then we have our very own Michael G by the sea and he won not only first place but also best holiday exhibit for the hobbyists and this is so amazing um, Michael said he was gonna take this inspiration and, and do this cute little sip and shell cafe and shell shop and I thought it was a great idea but I had no idea that he was gonna do such a fabulous job so I'm gonna try to do my best to zoom in here so there's a little shell shop at the top with your little shell nets and let me sneak back to see that beautiful Genonia right in the back and then down here he's got his little Starbucks mugs which are so cute and look at all oh my gosh look at the little tiny seahorse and all of the little pastries in the cabinet Michael this is so cute get a good picture focus focus there we go Michael congratulations that is absolutely adorable and then we have some Christmas trees made of shells this is really pretty looks like these were flat laid and photographed and then here's a beautiful 4th of July patriotic wreath. And this is cool. This is a snow globe. I've, I don't think I've ever seen somebody do a snow globe. I have been to shell shows my entire life. And maybe I just didn't see one that I can remember, but I don't I don't think I've ever seen one. I think that these are pretty that's pretty amazing. And then here is a beautiful Valentine. Mm. And then this is going to be shell-related needle craft. So this is something else I don't have the patience for. <laughs> it is I I barely have patience for sewing my shell bags, you guys. I just I don't have the patience for needlepoint cross stitch. Although I definitely admire people that do. Oh my goodness, look at this one. That is beautiful. I don't even really know what you call that type of, um, I guess it's just needlepoint. I guess it's just, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a sewer like that, but this is unbelievable. You guys see the ombre effect and the waves of the different stitch lengths. Oh my goodness. That is pretty amazing. Penny Chrysler, I love your work. That's beautiful. Sensational Sanibel. Tribute to Vice President Pence. This is gorgeous. Marge Gammon. Best Shell Related Hobbyist Exhibit Award. Look how pretty. Oh, and look at the little, oh, it's like 3D, you guys. Look at that. There's a little bag of shells right there. That is gorgeous. Well done. And the bird feathers. Can you guys see the feathers right here? And there is President, or Vice President, excuse me, Vice President Trump's car with the little wow. American flag. And that's very down at the bottom. Awesome. Here's your best jewelry hobbyist, Donna Timmerman. And these are also made, I believe, of fish scales that are dyed. Absolutely beautiful and a little topiary tree here I love topiary trees I used to be like obsessed with them when I was a kid I don't remember why but I just remember that I was I love topiary trees and this one's beautiful the old apple old apple tree so you've got the Narita snail and the gar scale and then the apple blossom shell so those are the shells that were used and this is very cool so basically it's showing you the seasons so over here let's go over here you've got winter so you have the tree is dormant you've got the snow and it looks like that's crushed shell as snow which is very cool and then over here you have spring when it's starting to bloom and blossom and then you have the summer which is where they're all blossomed and then you have fall we all know fall is apple picking season you can see some of the, the leaves falling down 
and the apple bush and pear, and then back to winter. So that is very cool, very creative. The thought, the creativity is, is awesome. This is a beautiful shell tree made of scallops. When in doubt, guys, pick up every scallop you can find because everybody says they can't find shells, but I guarantee you can always find scallops, and they're always beautiful, and you can always do amazing things with them. Here's another pretty lamp. And look at this. This is cool. Self-collected jingle shells from Sandoval Captiva Keo Costa. So, again, jingle shells. Another shell that people say, I can't find any shells. Well, you know what? You can find jingle shells. And I'll tell you what, this is an awesome way to create something to display them. I love seeing artwork done with common shells that you can literally find at the beach, any beach, any time down here. And jingle shells and scallops are certainly two of those. So that is awesome. This is beautiful. Best lamp winner. It's made of different colored sea urchins. It's very cool. There's another beautiful lamp. And then we have this cute little window <laughs> display, little patriotic sailboat. Looking out at the beach with some shells in the sand and then a beautiful little seashell display in the window. I love that little flower arrangement. These teeny tiny little arrangements. These are miniature flower arrangements. So they cannot be larger than three by three by three. So they are absolutely teeny tiny. Little gardening. That is adorable. Look how small you guys. So tiny. Oh gosh, is that a baby Junonia? Is that like a hatchling Junonia? Hold on. Look at that. I don't know. It might be. Look at that. That is absolutely teeny. Beautiful. And that one won the best miniature flower arrangement. Garfish scale flower. That is beautiful. And then look at this one, you guys. And this is all made out of coquinas. So another shell that you guys can find just about any time on the beach. And look how beautiful this is to make a beautiful coquina flower. And here we have another. Flower arrangement. And look at that. That is pretty awesome. I'm not even sure what all of these are made of. The big flowers look like. Look at that. These big pieces of shell. It looks like scales. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. And then we have another beautiful arrangement here. Again, using different colored coquinas. It's yellow and white. And we got some like white and purple here. We got a purple flower over here. This is beautiful. I love this one too. Gorgeous. And this is a beautiful arrangement under glass. Let me try to zoom in. So creative. Look at the little flower with the kitten paws. Kitten paws are another one that's super common to find. Gorgeous with the mussel shell flowers right here. And then more bleeding hearts. Oh my gosh, I love bleeding hearts. And this is the best. Shell flower exhibit award. Why don't we go all the way around the outside? And I'm going to turn around so you guys can see. I'm over here so you guys can start to see some of the wreath exhibits. 
is a little tiny angel. All of the barnacles, ginormous barnacles. Back up so you guys can see some of these are pretty big. This one's beautiful. Shell wreaths are so fun. Oh, this one's gorgeous. Look at the muscle shells. Beautiful. Oh, I love the pink one. To support the stem. Love the pink one. Here is a oh, come on, over here. Mermaid. And this one, if I can back up, if you guys can see, is a jellyfish with the tentacles coming down. Look really at creative. <laughs> Look at that. Beautiful mirror. All right, guys, we're going to be heading over to the scientific division now. So if you are ready to learn about some species of shells, let's go. All right, guys, as you can see, it's getting pretty busy in here. So I'm going to do my best to try to run you guys through the scientific um, division here. So you guys can see. And again, if there's something that you would like to read, um, you can just kind of pause the video. And this is all student work, grades K through 6. And this is the best young scientist exhibit here. And this is starting over this way. This is grades 7 through 12. Shells of the Portuguese. Yes. And now we are into the single shell category. So I'm going to run you guys through the single shells. Slipper snail, aka Indian boat. Here is Michael G. and his albino. Let me see if I can zoom in. He's an albino horse conch. That is really pretty. And I love his Christmas theme. He's sticking with the, the Christmas cookie Starbucks theme from his Sip and Shell exhibit. And, ooh, let's see, this is world record size. Okay, so, let me show you guys, this is how, this is a quarter, and you guys can see how small the shell is, but this is, let's see if I can be creative and show you guys, I don't know if this is gonna work, but we're gonna try. Hmm. Hold on. Okay, that little thing that looks like a piece of dust, that's the shell. Can you guys see that? Oh my god. Alright, well, here's my finger for reference. It is so tiny. And this is what it looks like if you were able to see it under the microscope. Wow. Information about that. Oh, I love that micro mollusk. I always call them tiny, but micro mollusk is, um, I definitely do have some micro mollusks, and I love that. So that's pretty cool. Hawk wing conch here. And these are, I believe these are all shells that are found on Sanibel. So all of these were found on the island. So if you come here, these are all really cool things that you'll be able to see. And you can see that this has a double lip on it right here, which is pretty neat. Okay, so a single lip would look like that, and then the double lip. It's pretty cool, that's pretty neat. Sometimes you can find some freak shells, as we call them, that are oddities. And this is a beautiful scotch bonnet that is still on my bucket list, you guys, believe it or not. All of you are finding all these scotch bonnets, and I just cannot find one to save my life. And here is a golden olive. We always have a golden olive, I feel like, it, at the shell show. Long spine star shell. It's hard on the black background to see that, but... There we go. Here's another little golden olive. 
has a beautiful giant tulip, which is also on my bucket list. I found lots of tulips, never a giant one. And then this is single shell Caribbean. So these are all Caribbean shells that were self-collected. So you have to actually find these yourself. You can't just go buy them. And that's a beautiful rosemary. So rosemarys are also found here, but you can you can add them to this category if you have found them not on Sanibel but anywhere else. So let me have this in a little magnifying glass there. the rose petal talons here but not not any Texas talons <laughs> gold banded cone that is beautiful I've never found a banded cone it's an alphabet cone but banded and then here's the picture of when they found it which is really cool I always like to see that too give you guys a little background Kite Island one. Wow, that is beautiful. And this is where they found it. Guadalupe. Very cool. And here is Michael again with his teeny tiny micro Genonia. Let me zoom in. Congratulations, Michael, on your ribbon. That is absolutely perfect little teeny tiny Genonia. Wow. Those cookies are making me hungry. I wonder if you would mind if I stole one. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right, I'm going to come over here and show you guys. I'm trying to find traffic that is not so crazy. Let's go down here first. So these are all of the displays of multiple shells. And this one won the Judges Merit Award. Wow. Very cool. And look at this display. This display runs all the way down. These are all fossil shells. So again, if you guys want to pause the video to read, you are welcome to. Official USA State Fossils, which is so cool. So if you see your state, let me know what your fossil is. <laughs> wow. This is an amazing collection of fossil shells. That is very cool. Look at the fossils, you guys. Look at the fossil Genonia shell. You can kind of see the color through that. Look at these. Wow. Sarasota. You think there's no shells out there, but there are shells. There are fossils 66.4 million years ago. So I do love the artistic exhibits, but I can tell you that the nerd in me loves the scientific. You can, you can just read and learn so much. Here you go, Hanagorda. Stay Road 31 that I am on just about every single day when I go see my pony. 
Maybe I should uh, take a day and go shell fossil hunting out there. <laughs> That's very cool. Now I might have to start with a fossil shell addiction. Yeah. <laughs> Here's Calvert Cliff, so this is where Barry and I used to live, and we used to go to Calvert County all the time and find awesome fossils there. Um, you can find some really amazing shark teeth and you can also find awesome fossil shells, but this is literally like where we would go to the beach, right there. And here is an explanation of what a fossil is. Again, if you guys just pause the video, you'll be able to see and read more about that. And then this is nice. I kind of went backwards, so just because there were so many people down here, but this is understanding the labels. So this is really nice um, as you're going through these this display, which again, one first place and goes all the way down the table. This shows you how to read it. So up here you have the genus, the species, the author, and then what it is, the common name, which will all be, you know, most of us will recognize the common name before you recognize the scientific name, and then where it was collected, and then the date. So um, the author here is going to be the first person that described and named the shell species, which is pretty cool too. So when it was d kind of discovered. So um, so let's go down. Let me, let me find a shell that um, is kind of a common shell that you guys will recognize. Some of these are not from our area. Let's see. Here we go. So this is like a horse cough, okay? But the scientific name is going to be there at the top. In 1840 is when it was discovered and named and it was found in Sarasota yeah, in 1991. That specimen was found in 1991. So that's pretty cool. Um, I really think that this is super, super interesting. And I'm gonna start right here in the middle because there's not, oh, actually here is the end of the display. So this one is going to be the best fossil exhibit and best of the show, um, best of the show shell fossil. Okay, so this one goes all the way down here. And a lot of this is just really education. So, you know, you don't only just display your shells, but you say what they are, um, where you found them, which is really cool. And a lot of these have like crazy awesome information. So here, if you look, <gasps> look, there's my family of scotch bonnets that I really want to find. So you can see that they look very similar, right? But they're actually two different species. That is pretty cool. And they show the size and the date and where they were found. It's pretty, pretty neat. And here's your alphabet cones. Collecting sites. Shows exactly where they were collected. <laughs> and here is some alphabet cones. So you guys can see that. I do like it when they put the common name because most of us don't. Heck, I'll be the first one to say that I can't pronounce half of these scientific names and I'm not even going to try. Look how big this is in my hand. Oh, that's a, that's a really big shell. Lots of these are found in quarries, especially down here in Florida when they are digging because all of the fossils obviously are buried in the rock and the sand and so when they start digging up the land they unearth fossils. So I can tell you when I'm out at the barn, which is nowhere near a beach, um, we have shells. <laughs> we'll be trail riding and there'll be a conch laying there or an olive laying there because back in the day when Florida was all underwater, you know, those, those shells were there and they've been underneath the dirt for years and years, which is pretty amazing. I'm gonna come right over here to go on the other side. Shells of the world. Now you guys join the club. 
Yeah. Here is Michael G's exhibit again. First, please, Michael, congratulations. This is so cute. I love this. Um, he's keeping the theme with the sip and shell with the little cookies. That is, again, Michael, like I might have to steal that Santa Claus right there and eat it because I'm really hungry right now. Those look good enough to eat, don't they, you guys? Look how cute. Very cool. Do not open till Christmas. Uh-oh. I'm going to be hungry for a while, aren't I? Those are so neat. I love those. Yeah. A little screenshot there of Michael's display. Congratulations, Michael. Freaky. Lighthouse Beach. Sanibel Island. So again, you guys, as I was just saying, you can find some cool freak shells that are different. You can see here that this one has a barnacle that looks like it grew into the shell. Here is your albino. Here is a wonky looking conch. Here is a pair of funky looking cockle shells. So always be, oh, in the whelk, there's an albino whelk and then a little wonky whelk. So always be on the lookout for not just shells, but some oddities too. You never know when they might win you a blue ribbon at the shell shop. Thank you. Purple Wendell traps. All right, I know like pretty much all of you, if you're a sheller, you love Wendell traps, right? Like I know you all try to find them. Um, if you're on Sanibel Lighthouse, Beach is the best place that I have found to find them. But check out the purple well, ones. Okay, perfect. now I am officially going to be on a hunt for a purple Wendell Jones. That is so pretty. Can you guys see that? Look at them all. It's beautiful. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. And this is very cool. I kind of want this for my office because I love pink. And I know on camera, I'm trying to get the color right, it's really bright pink. It's not the coral color. It's not like a salmon color, but for some reason it looks salmon color on my camera. It is bright pink and it is so pretty. I love it. Here's some sea urchins. Amanda Baker, congratulations from Cape Coral. One first place. So, um, if you guys can see, there's a lot of different species of sea urchins, and some of them are found locally, and then some of them are found um, in other areas of Florida, and the Caribbean, and, and all over the world. Um, but if you remember me saying, in a lot of the artistic artwork, they use urchin spines. So these are very thick spines on these urchins, but the ones around here that you'll find are very, very thin. But they also make really, really great, um, what am I trying to say, little pieces, if you will, for creating shell flowers and sailor's valentines. So this is also a first place winner in this display right here. And this one is black and white shells. So this is so cool. So all of these shells are black or white. We're used to thinking, oh, you know, we want the colorful shells. We want the orange scallops and the pink scallops and the, the bright orange horse conks and all of the pink petal tones. But these shells are all black and white. And it's, it's awesome because you can see the beauty in, in the shells. Look at the Naritas. That's our street. And just having black and white. I love this display. I would have given it a first place, too. I think this is so cool. Albino wow. shells. They can definitely still be beautiful without color. Some of these I have never seen. Of course, Senegal. Yeah, I definitely have them in there. West Africa. <laughs> Oh, wow, this is amazing. Look at this Murex. It's black and white. Look how pretty. That one's really cool too. That one almost looks painted, doesn't it? Wow. Uh, 
very cool. And here's my like favorite show ever. I am a flat scallop fan. I call them flat Stanleys. So if you have kids, you probably know who flat Stanley is. Um, but we usually only find the tops, the flat part of the shell. But when they are whole, and we try to get down here, they actually have a a concave scallop shell underneath. So they're not con contrary to what people think. If they're if they're a bivalve and they're together, they're two flat shells. So they have one flat, and then it's a pair. The other side of the pair of the shell is like a regular scallop. Isn't that kind of cool? So you guys might have found a lot of flat scallop bottoms and not known it because you think they're just regular calico scallops. Isn't that cool? And then here, oh my gosh, serifs. I love serifs. They're another common shell to find. These are not a species that are from here. Look at all of them. Zoom in to show you guys. But you will find species of serifs here, especially the little teeny tinies that I love to collect. And these also make awesome shells for sailors valentines and shell flowers anything like a you know, little micro that you need and then this is the best single south pacific shell display look at this you guys these shells are like huge ginormous and i know i'm gonna get questions about my stripes on my hand this is actually eyeshadow and a lip color it doesn't come off. It is waterproof, beach-proof, UV protection for the beach. It is amazing. And if you want to learn more, please go over to my sister channel on YouTube. It is Beauty and the Beach with Laura. And you will learn uh, how I protect myself from all of the harmful UV rays when I am shelling. And you will learn about all the products I use. And I do makeup tutorials and skincare information there, too. Be sure to check that out. These are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So here we go. This is like absolutely humongous. I wish we could find shells like this here. You have to go over to the Philippines or Australia, but I definitely would love to find a ginormous shell like this. I mean, we have big horse conks and whelks, but like not like this. These are huge. These look like little or something I don't know oh my gosh and they're getting even bigger hold on I got to hold my camera up now so now you guys can see how big they're getting this is crazy and even bigger look even bigger oh my goodness that is impressive there is nothing boring about clams I have to love this display too because I tell you all so much that there are so many underrated seashells and everybody wants to find the Genonia, and I think that that's awesome, but there are so many cool shells out there. Um, you can see that they are in the driftwood. So when you find driftwood that has holes in it, ooh, this is really good information here. You guys can go ahead and pause that if you wanna see some of the really cool statistics and information. But if you find driftwood and it has holes in it, you're probably wondering what made the holes, right? Well. The little clams made the holes. There's little clams living in there. Can you see them? That is really neat. So if you didn't learn anything, you learned that the holes in your driftwood are created by clams. All right, guys, I'm gonna do one more row. It's getting pretty crowded in here. Um, this is gonna be the best Sanibel Captiva collected, self-collected shells. So the other thing that's really fun um, about the shell show is anybody can enter, you guys. You can enter, and if you come here on vacation and you have um, a really awesome haul, take some of the best shells that you found and put it into a display and enter it. So if you have not come to um, Sanibel before, this is just a taste of some of the shells you can find. Again, some of these are not super common, so don't expect that you're going to find all of these when you come down. But these are some albino whelks, which are not common to find. The albino lightning whelks, a giant, giant shark eye, a beautiful cutter. 
go. Fighting Kong. You've got some Scotch bonnets, which are still on my bucket list. Giant true tulips, which are also still on my bucket list. Beautiful horse conks here. You've got your olives. It's so hard when they put stuff on black background because the glare is crazy. So there's your Gaudi Nautica, AKA Moon Snail. Beautiful, perfect Genonia. You've got your baby ears here, which are not super common, but I do um, know people that find them. Here's some nice examples of apple muraxes, a banded tulip. You've got some paper, a paper fig here, and then a pear well here. And people ask me the difference all the time. Think about paper figs. Um, it, it's very, very paper thin, and it doesn't have a little knob here, like a little point. And then your hair well is gonna have like that little point at the top and usually have more of a pattern. So they do look similar, but they are different shells. Nutmegs, which are my husband's favorite, your angel wing. My personal favorite, which is a flat scallop, which we just learned about over on the other side. And that is a beautiful orange one. And then these shells here, people think that they are the same. They're not. This is actually a drill. If you can see the vertical ridges going this way, and then you have your horse conks, which are the same color, but their ridges um, go more horizontal like that. So this is a beautiful display of shells that you can find um, on the island here. And I'm gonna turn around and show you this cute little, this cute little crab shell. It looked like an alien because it's got barnacles right where it would have eyes. <laughs> That's pretty funny. And then this is really cool too. This is a sugar starfish consuming a clam. So there's a clam in there. So for those of you who think that a starfish can't eat a clam, it can, and there is a piece of that. And then this is really cool. Um, the horseshoe crab is one of the oldest creatures on Earth. They have been around for a very, very long time. And you can sometimes find these um, washed up on the beach, but they are millions and millions of years old. And this one, um, let me show you guys. So these are interesting facts. And then here, you can see the horseshoe crab. That is very neat. Alrighty, this is another one of my displays that I have to love because again, people say they can't find shells, but arc shells are plentiful. And there's so many variations. And if you go to the beach with a, mi with a mindset that you wanna find all the variations, you will have so much fun shelling. These shells, and if you have watched my other shelling tutorials, you will know that these are my favorite shell to use for Christmas lights and fairy lights. So you take a strand of Christmas lights, and you find arc shells, you've got to find them to match. So you've got to find a right and a left, and then you sandwich them and hot glue them on your Christmas lights, and it, they light up beautifully. And you can do that with the smaller arc shells too, and the fairy lights that you can buy now, and they're just beautiful. So look at all the color variation. And I promise you, go to the beach, try to do this display, look for different color arc shells. You will find them, and, and you can set up a beautiful display like this, um, this would look beautiful just hanging in somebody's home on the wall or you can come to the shell show and you can win a ribbon. So that is an awesome display too. Um, this is the best Florida Caribbean shells any source. So any source means you can buy them or you can find them and then this is going to be um, anywhere Florida down to the Caribbean so you, you can't do, um, you know, you can't buy shells from the, the Indo-Pacific or anything but these are all going to be warm water shells so these are from hurricane dorian and you can see the hairy spiny um sea urchin and this is a good example as i was talking before about the other display how this sea urchin has really thick spines and then this one has really like fine spines and both of these can be used for those sailors valentines which is pretty cool so that is very awesome. The best time to shell is after a storm. Molly! So Molly is a first mate 
for Captain Tammy on um, Treasure Seeker Shell Tours. That's another tongue, tongue twister for me. And this is her display of um, shells she found, I'm assuming, while she was out um, on the boat, Pice Island, Dickman's Island. So these are some beautiful golden olives. And I actually found a golden olive on the shell tour with Tammy as well. I can't remember if Molly was with me on that one, but I've been out with Molly as well. And she is a fabulous person to teach you how to shell. Um, so definitely check out Tammy's site on Facebook and see all of the cool... Oh, I'm still jealous of that scotch bonnet. I will find one one day. I actually did find one, but it was like really small and broken and it doesn't count. So, look at that banded tulip. Can you guys see that? That was found on Marco, or Marco Island? Kais Island. I thought that said Marco. Beautiful. Well done, Molly. Congratulations. And these are some of, these, these were some of my favorite shells as a kid. So you see these a lot in souvenir stores. Um, here so you guys can see. These are not local to Florida, but they are so cool. Cowries are one of my favorites, and you'll you'll find them a lot of times in, in um, souvenir stores. They'll have like an etched design on them. They're just so pretty, but there are so many species and varieties of each one. Here's some calico scallops. Again, super common, and you can win a ribbon. Congratulations, Katie. Um, at the Sanibel Shell so by just showing what you've collected. Um, every once in a while, you will find a carrier shell. I cannot think of if I've ever found one or not. I can't tell you, but they're not extremely common, but um, when you find one, they are pretty neat. And let me kind of show you. They're kind of interesting because they're called carrier shells literally because they carry other shells and coral. So here, this one has like a piece of coral attached. This one has some shells attached. So sometimes if you find, um, you know, a clump of shells, you're not gonna realize that there's actually a shell underneath that. So you can see kind of the tip right here of the shell. And look at all the little shells. Can you guys see that have collected? There's like a little Sarah there. It looks like a little, uh, I don't know what that is. It looks like a little baby heart cockle, a little bivalve there. All the shells that have collected on the other shells. So carrier shells are super cool. Look at the coral on this one. That is super neat. So this is a very cool display. Ooh, and then we got some some tinies, minis and tinies, which are my favorite. So let me show you guys these. So these are sharp ribbed drill shells. I love finding these. They are tiny. They are so fun to find. And yes, you can find them all over Southwest Florida. So this is the display, and I'll get down here and show you guys the different varieties that you can find. So there's ones that are white. There's ones that are brown. They have this sharp lip around the outside. So, as you guys can see, it's an albino one right there. And they have different patterns and different colors. This one right here is my favorite to find where it's dark and then it has that beautiful like white lip around it. So I love finding the sharper drills. Love that display. And here's some more carrier shells. So this is probably what your shell will look like if you find it. Sometimes they look like that, but then other times they, they literally are covered in all of the other shells. So that is pretty neat. Here's a nice display of baby ears. So single species. So so if you if you love a certain shell, whatever your favorite shell is, here you go, jingle shells. Perfect. Third place. Super common shell that you can find anywhere. Um, and you collect them. Find, get, get your favorite kind of shell and find as many as you can and, and as many varieties um, of them. Color varieties, shape varieties, size varieties as you can. Put them on display and um, you can enter them in the shell show. So this is really cool because you don't find them, at least I don't find them often um, 
as bivalves attached. Do you see that? Usually we just find the single ones, but they come in all colors. They come in white and yellow and orange and bright orange and black and silver. So this is definitely, here's the black one right here. There's a black one, a yellow, orange. So this is a really cool display too. All right, everybody. So I'm gonna be heading out, but I just wanted to do just a little panoram of the show. It's super, super busy and super fun. Lots of people here. Um, if you were not able to make it this year, I hope that you guys can make it next year. Um, and if you have any questions, please comment below. If you haven't already, click the subscribe button and the little bell, and then you'll be notified every time I post a new video. I hope you guys have a shell-tastic weekend and I'll see you